Salesforce security deep dive, starting with authentication and authorization at a high level summary. My name is Steve Simpson, and I'm gonna be doing a Salesforce security deep dive. This video is the first in a multi-part series, and we're gonna start with a summary of authentication and authorization, both at the browser level and coming into an API client. Here is a slide that I've shown in a previous uh, video for in the integration series. And here I show the pathways to getting data, either coming from the right as a browser user or coming to the left through a client application. And this shows how either side first reaches up to the authentication server to authenticate. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be diving in, we're gonna start with a high level summary of authentication authorization and go even deeper in subsequent videos. If we look at it from a browser standpoint, um, browser with a human driving, they're gonna be originating from that browser and the first steps of security is we can be setting up the server to filter them. First, all security must come in using SSL and TLS. And we'll be explaining those two terms in a subsequent video. Um, there are authentication options open to verify the client. Multi-factor, you know, the, the you know, multi-factor components we're all getting used to. Um, additionally, we can set up an IP whitelist, see where their origin IPs are coming from. And we can even require a client side certificate. And I'll be diving deeper into these particular options in subsequent videos. Now, there are two ways you can come in through the browser. One, you can come in straight using Salesforce as the identity provider. What that means is Salesforce will be the one to determine the authentication. Is this the correct person user trying to, trying to use the system? So step one is authenticate. And then once the Salesforce authentication server determines that the person is valid, and this could be through standard Salesforce username and password or coming in through the you know, Salesforce layered MFA, then it sends a session to the instance web server. Each um, client gets their own instance, um, maybe on a shared pod leading to the org or maybe on Hyperforce. Um, and then once the session is established, then page access and resources you know, are, 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 um, are, are utilized and that requires authorization. And we'll be doing deep dives into authorization using profile level security, permission sets, and getting even deeper. So the first step is the authentication, and the authentication can be doing the layers of the um, MFA, IP whitelist, client site certificate, and, M uh, and other layers for validation. Now, you could come in through a third-party identity provider, an IDP, this could be any one of a myriad of uh, IDP products that have been set up in an SSO relationship with Salesforce. So the first step is you authenticate at the IDP. And the typical way for that, that IDP to communicate back with Salesforce is through a SAML assertion, which is passed through a response redirect in the browser. And then the Salesforce authentication server receives the SAML assertion, SAML token, opens it up, validates it, makes sure it's been digitally signed, checks its contents and date timestamps. And if everything passes, then it issues the session token, directs you know, the browser to the proper web server. And then through authorization, you can start accessing pages and resources. So the authentication is either done by the Salesforce as an IDP, or as a third party, as an IDP, passing in a SAML assertion. And again, we'll, go, we'll be diving deeper into this in subsequent videos. Then the authorization kicks in. This is where we determine what, you know, what kind of pages or resources can the person do, and we'll be diving into that. Now, if we go over to using a um, API access, then you'll be using the OAuth flows. And OAuth flows, and, and on the left, we're talking about a client. This isn't necessarily a human using a browser. This could be a mobile app. This could be a server. This could be a myriad of systems that want to access the Salesforce data. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, we can do authentication using, you know, the, the auth server could be doing MFA, IP whitelisting, client side cert. All of that happens potentially at an auth server. There's a number of 
web OAuth flows. Um, each one has a different sequence of events, a different steps. Web server flow, when you're using an external web server, user agent flows, typically for a mobile device. The refresh token flow is where you your session is expired, but you're allowed to have hold a, a long-lived refresh token. A JWT bearer token flow, a client credentials flow, um, device flow, asset token flow, SAML bearer assertion flow, SAML assertion flow, open ID access token, and what used to be the username and password, but is now being um, you know it's disabled by default due to security concerns. So once you've established, uh, you know, your Salesforce authentication server, then it's going to pass a session token in step two to the instance API once that's that's, you know, that's providing the API access. And then you'll be able to access your pages and resources through authorization. So to summarize, getting in the front door of Salesforce, whether you're coming in either as a user in a browser or coming in as a server on behalf, um, you will have to have uh, potentially layers of IP security with IP whitelist, client-side cert TLS. Then the authorization server kicks in. This is where if the human is involved, you may have things like the multi-factor and go to a, you know, a third-party IDP. If you're coming in through um, a web server from like a uh, API access, you have a number of these flows. Um, all, and then you're going to be passing a session token. It all leads to the session token, which then gets that you know, access context to starting to get to pages and resources which need to be authorized. So this brings some key terms. Transport level security coming in through the um, TLS, potentially coming in through IP whitelisting, client-side cert. Then the first thing you're gonna be doing, whether you're pretty much coming in through a user or coming in through the, the API access is you're hitting the authorization server, which needs to authentic, the authentication server, which needs to authenticate. Determine is this a valid user? Then it issues a session token, which goes to the resource server, which is the server containing the data that we're looking for. And then we shift in from authentication to authorization. Now that we know that this is a valid user, we want to be able to control the things they get access to. And we'll be reviewing these components in subsequent videos. Hope this was helpful. So join again for the subsequent videos. Well, same bad time, same bad channel. Thank you very much.